one of the things that I think we should be famous for is we have some of the heaviest shop vacs around. Uh, that's because we pick up all of this gunk here. And this little shop vac here weighs, I would think, about 30 pounds. And so, this is why sure this is aimed correctly. Oh, you can't really see, but you'll see it coming out. I don't really want to touch the camera. So, I figured Let's, let's, let me show you what. So let me show you what this looks like right up close. This is what's in the bilge. It's paint chips. There's rust in here. Uh, there's rust with paint on it. Different colors of paint, you know, from, you know, whether it be red lead for the bilge or yellow for fuel lines it's brown you know, and it's squishy and it's fragrant and it's very slimy and believe me these stains do not come out these are clean pants oh, well, you've got to get we got a plug in here I guess you gotta hold that one too. I got this out. I got this plug out. Well, yeah. You just need to, um, you gotta get it pretty low, but not all the way low. Where'd you put the bolts? In the can? I'm sure everything will be fine. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, get the flashlight. There's one here, you want it? Oh, I got one. Oh, you're making the lights go spooky in here. <laughs> I think we blew a fuse. No, we didn't blow a fuse. Huh? Did you unplug that? It's all spooky. Ready? Yeah. This thing keeps kicking on and off for some reason. Yeah, but it's pumping. <laughs> why, is, why is it kicking on and off is what I don't understand. It makes a light what's, it, what's it need for starting amps? More than we have? Oh, I don't know. These, I do not know. Horsepower, amps, what's it say right there? Yeah, of course. Uh, cool. Amps is 8.4 amps. Well, this on one on 120. So in theory, in theory we're fine, right? What for starting? So or the. Well, I mean it's pumping, right? Why is it going on and off? I just maybe it'll smooth out. All right. I think it wasn't good enough fast enough to get off the starting circuit. Yeah. You know, we all take a while to wake up in the morning. How's it doing? Shine the light over here. Yeah. We got a solid stream there. It's still pumping a whole stream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sweet. We'll let that drain out then. Okay, so now that some of the housekeeping is done, uh, my 
50 pound vacuum is light again and my 30 pound vacuum is light again um, I've got a bunch of buckets of oil out of here water out of here uh, dirty rags you name it We've, I've been doing a lot of cleaning this morning there's the next two projects coming up here um, and you've heard me speak of that about this before is one removing the gauge lines that are down there you see them run down along the tank there they're gonna come down here and then they head up here and they come up here so you know it's very obvious what they are fuel oil add filter out fuel oil add strainer in and out they're gauges so we've got to remove those lines so that we can get in scrape that clean and big exciting thing is we're going to start assessing the health of this engine here uh, when there was water in here it was dripping down into the crankcase and the main thing that'll do that is your cylinder jacket is cracked rusted out you name it or the oil ring the o-rings are perished uh, you'll have this with a car um, o-rings they go bad they start to leak so the whole process for this is for each cylinder we need to remove the exhaust manifold now these this is water jacketed so there's water that runs through here okay and then the exhaust gas goes through the center into the big manifold here and it goes out into the muffler room from there so we need to remove that remove the cover remove the rockers um, then we need to remove the head and then right right in here this is the top deck plate it's called and then there's the bottom deck plate um, we're going to have access to the piston, and then we need to attach the lifting eyelet to that, pull it out. Uh, from down here, we need to go to the crank, and then crack open those two nuts there, so that we can remove the piston, the connecting rod, and um, from there, we can lift the jacket out of there. And you know what? I'm going to go and show you what one of those jackets look like, just to give you some some context. The cylinder jackets the cylinder jackets sit inside the block and on your on your car at home or your truck the piston is going to go up and down inside the block. These use liners and so these liners you can remove them at sea or in the dock you know whatever and that way you don't have to hone out the block every time you need to refresh the engine it's just the liner needs to come out and then you just put a new one in and you can see that it's got the lip there so it's going to sit down on top of the deck plate and that's the scavenge port where the air enters into the piston and those are the rings where your o-rings are going to sit for the water jacket Okay, so all the water is going to be running through, and this is going to help seal up the block then. Um, if the O-rings perish, or if you have, you know, damage here, damage in the block, you're going to leak water. So it's believed that on the V16 in B3, the O-rings, these O-rings, have perished, which is understandable given their age. And so when there was water in the engine, it started leaking down. So, yeah, yeah, because between some of them, you gotta go like 30 or 40 degrees from one to the next one. And that, that's a day uh, these were off, and I heard Mike, what? language. That's the pan. Wait, 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 wait. Does that work? I, I'm just I, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm an advocate for moments with, moments with Mike. I 
think that end one is the one because it's all uh, that's why it's rusty down there. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. And I think so. We'll pull this one then. And I think it was, I think it was leaking right through the sleeve. But I'm telling you, those sleeves over there, I don't think are big enough. We will find out. You know, the, uh, how long is that? So we've gone through, and these I believe go to the eight and a three cylinder. Um, I'm not seeing any that would fit the 16s, which is a real bummer. So, if we really want a 16 to run, we'd have to source those parts. Or, hey, we may just pull it out and realize that they're all in perfect shape and we just need O-rings for it, but only one way to find out. That'll be next week. This is where the plenum that's over there sits, and this is technically called the fan room. And that's just where the wires live. We are here with John, and we have this. John says he's got canes. John, what did this say? Did you see text? Something about sponges. Sponges. For Google Translate. I'll do this so anyone can Google Translate. Those are all our artifacts. This is the invoice 76. Ooh, what's it an invoice for? Now, this spoon, we think, was used for the cup of coffee that would have gone to the instant coffee packet. Um, there were sponges, king-size, king-size cigarettes. And here's something interesting. Uh, we've got, we need to clean it off, but it's a grid. A, a grid of a bunch of text here and open it up we may have the picture of the gentleman who dropped it in here I don't know
And I'm not gonna show it, but I think there's a phone, a phone book, a contact list in here as well. Can you imagine keeping the same phone number for like 45 years? That would be pretty impressive. And this is an invoice dated July 30th, 1976. And again, feel free to Google Translate this if you want. It's all Greek to me. Anything on the back? Nothing on the back.